Hello everyone. This is a problem from current electricity. This problem can check your understanding about how ideal voltmeters will operate and also your understanding about the superposition of currents. Let's try and solve this problem. The circuit shown consists of three identical ideal voltmeters A, B and C, five resistors and an ideal battery. Find readings of all the voltmeters in terms of the terminal voltage capital V of the battery. Dear students, first to solve this problem, let us just ignore the presence of all these ideal voltmeters. Let us think about only resistors and then battery source. Suppose if I name this point as P and this point as Q, from your understanding of voltage divider rule, we know that from point P, if I name this as point S, the voltage drop between point P to S would be V by 3. And S, if I name this as T, then from S to T, the voltage drop would be V by 3. And even T to Q, the voltage drop would be from as V by 3. This we know from voltage divider rule. Suppose if I name this as P dash, this as S dash, this as Q dash. Correspondingly, we can say the voltage drop between P dash to S dash as V by 3. Voltage drop as V by 3. And from this point S dash all the way to Q dash, the voltage drop is going to be say 2V by 3. Okay, so this is from your voltage divider rule and ignoring the effect of all the voltmeters. So this is what we have. Now since we know the voltage drop for easy understanding, let me just ground this point as earthing let's say. So this would be at 0 volt now and this would be at plus V volts. Suppose if this is plus V, then we can say that point Q will be at 0 volt, point P would be at plus V volt and point Q dash would be at 0 volt, point P dash would be at plus V volt. So using your voltage divider rule, we can now easily identify voltage drop at each and every point which are considered as absolute potentials. So let me just quickly write this. P will be at plus V volt. This is S which is at 2V by 3 volt. So how do we know that this will be at 2V by 3 volt? Because the voltage drop should be V by 3. So V minus of 2V by 3 is anyhow V by 3. So 2V by 3 minus V by 3 would be the potential at this point. So this point we are naming it as T. So it is V by 3. And from T to the point Q, the voltage drop should be V by 3 and it is more evident just by looking at it. So this is plus V by 3. Similarly, this would be plus V volt. This point, which is named as S dash, which would be at positive 2V by 3 voltage. Dear students, now we will bring in the voltmeters. Suppose if I consider there is an voltmeter whose resistance I am using the symbol, let's say R dash. R dash is the resistance of each of this ideal voltmeters. We know that R dash is a really large value and finite. So we are considering as finite because we need a little bit of current to pass through it or else there won't be any deflection shown. So R dash is the resistance we are considering for the voltmeter. Suppose if I name this one as voltmeter A, then let us consider another voltmeter which is voltmeter B. Even its resistance is R dash. Let us connect these two fellows as shown here. Suppose if we connect these two A and B voltmeters, we know that they are connected between S and S dash. S and S dash are at same potentials. So there, there is no potential difference. So there is no flow of current between the node S and node S dash. So we can easily say that there won't be any flow of current in this branch because they are connected across the same potential points. Correct. Now suppose if I ignore this branch, suppose if I first consider the voltmeter A, which is connected in series with another voltmeter identical. Its name is C. And if we connect like this to the point T, then we know that this two resistors R dash corresponding to A and R dash corresponding to C. 
So these two voltmeters now are connected between these two points S and T. They are at different potentials, right? So there will be a flow of current. Let us say that small amount of current I flows from point S via these voltmeters to the point T. Okay. So I hope it is easy to observe. Now this would be say carrying I amount of current even through the voltmeter, voltmeter C. Okay. Now say this is one bit of analysis. Suppose now if I ignore this one, this is the resistor corresponding to voltmeter A. Suppose if I connect these two, let's say in our circuit only B and C are present, then there will be a flow of current through the voltmeter B followed by voltmeter C, right? So again, the situation would be similar to the previous one because the connection is between 2V by 3 to V by 3 is the voltage drop. So there will be a flow of current exactly same as the previous case. So I amount of current will pass through the voltmeter B and again it passes through the voltmeter C and it reaches the node T. Suppose if we consider both of them, we know that there won't be any flow of current from voltmeter A to voltmeter B. So I amount of current will flow through current voltmeter A, the same similar story. I amount of current will pass through even voltmeter B. Both of them will combine to give 2I amount of current which passes through the voltmeter C and this 2I will reach the point or node T. So dear students as you are aware that voltmeter reading, voltmeter reading corresponding to A and B can be obtained as I times of R dash because I is the current flowing through the voltmeter and R dash is the resistance of the voltmeter setup, right? So I R dash will give the voltmeter or voltage difference which is measured or reading shown in the voltmeter, correct? So similarly voltmeter reading in the case of C would be, see 2I is the current flowing through the voltmeter C and R dash is the resistance of it. So two times of I R dash would be the voltmeter reading of C. So let us now just use KVL. So potential at the point S, then we are crossing our voltmeter resistance A, which is minus I R dash. Then we are passing through this. We are just choosing this line and now we are moving in this way. So again another potential drop of 2i times of r dash now as we move in this way we'll reach the potential t so potential at s minus potential at t should be equal to 3 times of i r dash so potential at s minus potential at t so we know that the potential difference between the point s and point t is given to be v by 3 this we got it by initial analysis of voltage divider rule. So three times of IR dash we have here. So IR dash is going to be V by nine. So with this, we can easily say the readings in voltmeter A and B is going to be V by nine. And the reading in the voltmeter C is two V by nine. So this, that's all. I hope you understood the approach and how to use the superposition principle guys so if you have understood in one go just hit the like button and thank you for watching